But the last power here, join me in a prayer before just we share the message. Lord God, we give thanks to you for tremendous love. Bring us together as brothers and sisters and family of you. So we know that we are children. Children of a great God. Children of everlasting loving Father. We now just ready to hear your message through the words that Jesus spoke to the people, the crowd in many, many years ago. But he speaks to our hearts again with Matthew 5, 8. The blessed are those wonderful people who have pure heart. They will see you. This is going to happen to us this morning again as we share your message, Lord. Pour your spirit upon us, each and every one of us who are willing to listen to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. In Matthew 5, 8, Jesus delivers the sixth, the sixth beatitude, declaring the blessed that are the pure in heart. They shall see God. They shall see God. You know, this verse encapsulates the profound truth about the nature of God's kingdom and also the transformative power of purity. Today, let us explore what it means to be pure in heart. Drawing insights from both the Old and New Testaments and uncover practical applications for our Christian living in this United States. To comprehend the significance of purity of heart, we must first grasp its essence, the meaning, the core value of purity that Jesus talks about. Purity of heart extends beyond mere, mere external actions. Rather, it involves the innermost the core of our being, of our thoughts, intentions, and motives. The word pure in English language comes from katharos in Greek, which means without admixture. Without admixture. To have a pure heart means that there, is, there are no conflicting elements within it. If your heart harbors two conflicting thoughts or words simultaneously, the Bible considers that state of a heart to be impure or unclean. In other words, a person with an impure heart is someone whose own thoughts coexist with God's thoughts Within their mind. Something like, you will coexist with God's will. That's not the things about pure in heart. In the hearts of such people, there are, there's always conflict, strife, and disobedience, which constantly occur in position, in opposition to God. This is why Jesus says, blessed are those who are pure in heart, they shall see God. But a pure heart reflects a state of spiritual cleanness, free from deceit, hypocrisy, and impurity. The pure in heart are those who cultivate sincerity, integrity, and holiness in their relationship with God and plus Others sitting next to you, or in front of you, or behind you. They shall perceive the God who purifies your hearts through his word and the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. And makes them whole. How can we purify our hearts? What is the first thing 
for us to do as we purify our hearts or cleanse our hearts to be a pure soul. Understand the scripture. What else? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Yeah, what else? What makes it pure? Be purified. Yes, you're all right. But I need to continue to do my sermon, right? <laughs> right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> the first, draw yourselves near to God, who is a holy. Who is a holy? Draw yourself to the holy God. That's the first step. For us to do as we want to purify our souls and minds and hearts and everything we do and think and say. James 4.8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, your sinners, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded James encourages believers to draw close to God and purify their hearts from sin and double-mindedness. It emphasizes the need of a need for personal repentance and spiritual cleansing. Second, you humbly ask for God's mercy for our forgiveness and cleansing of our sins. First John chapter 1 Verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is always faithful and just and willing to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Want to amen to that? Amen. Yes. <laughs> this verse underscores the importance of confessing our sins to God who promises to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is what we believe. So we come to God with that assurance of the word that Bible says to us. Bible doesn't say a lie. Bible doesn't lie to us at all. Bible always gives us a truth. A truth. Do it. Draw self to God. And pray for his touch, all right? To cleanse you and purify you and forgive you and your sins. And third, if you do these two things I mentioned to you, God shall give you an assurance that your heart is purified by his grace through your faith. So Hebrews 10, 22 says, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with a full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies, bodies washed with pure water. The Hebrews encourage the believers to approach God with sincerity and faith and trusting in the cleansing power of Christ to sacrifice it speaks of the purification of both the heart and the conscience through the redempt work of Christ. Throughout the Old Testament, we encounter individuals whose lives exemplify purity of heart. One notable example is King David, described as a man after God's own heart. Despite his human flaws and shortcomings, David exhibited genuine repentance and unwavering devotion to God again and again and again. And again and again and again. That's important. Not once, not twice, again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Things like that. So he just wrote in Psalm 51 verse 10, Create in me, O Lord. Create in me. A pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. You know, David's acknowledgement of his need for divine cleansing 
serves as a timeless reminder of the importance of purity in our work and walk with God. Another com compelling example is found in the story of Joseph in Genesis, who remained steadfast in his commitment to righteousness despite facing numerous trials and temptations. Genesis 39 verse 9 records Joseph's response to Potiphar's wife's advances. And it says, how then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against the God? Simple, but straightforward answer. Joseph's unwavering loyalty to God and commitment to moral purity ultimately led to his exaltation and deliverance. His story inspires us to uphold the purity of heart, even in the face of adversity. In the New Testament, the Jesus our Lord serves as the ultimate example of purity of heart. He lived a sinless life, perfectly aligning his thoughts, words, and actions with the will of the Father. Every moment, every day. So Hebrews Chapter 4, verse 15 affirms Jesus' purity, saying, For we do not have a high priest, which is Jesus, who is able, unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Jesus' impeccable purity qualifies him as a perfect mediator between God and humanity and offering as a sacrifice to God, redeeming and reconciling to all of us who believe in Him. Another noteworthy example is found in the Apostle Paul, who experienced the radical transformation upon encountering Christ on the road to Damascus. Paul's conversion illustrates the profound impact of the purity of heart as it transitioned from preacher to preacher, from darkness to light. In 2 Corinthians 7, 1, Paul exalts the believers to pursue holiness, a life of holiness. And it says, therefore, since we have those, these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates the body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Paul's life serves as a testament to the transformative power of purity unleashed through a surrendered heart to Christ. As a Christian living in the United States in the 21st century, we are called to embody purity of heart in our daily lives amidst a culture marked by moral relativism, what do you think? And spiritual compromise. Every corner of life. Here are some practical ways we can cultivate purity of heart listen first let us guard our thoughts first before saying something but guard our thoughts Proverbs in the Old Testament chapter 4 23 admonishes us to above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Amen. We must be vigilant in monitoring our thought life, filtering out negativity, impurity, and worldly influences, cultivating mindsets saturated with God's word and focused on what is true, holy, and noble, and pure, enables us to maintain purity of heart. 
Do not fail to maintain the purity of your heart. If you fail to maintain it, you fail everything else. After that, the second, let's practice integrity. I know it's hard. Integrity. Integrity is a hallmark of purity of heart. We must strive to align our words with our actions, demonstrating honesty and transparency and consistency in our dealings with others, whether in our workplaces and communities and relationships. Integrity shines as a beacon of light in a world darkened by deception and deceit from media, from the papers, from the folks around us. Third, let us pursue holiness. Holiness is not an optional pursuit, but a divine mandate for every believer. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16 declares, But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Living a life set apart for God involves deliberate choices to flee from sin and pursue righteousness and consecrate ourselves wholly to Him. The last, let us seek God's presence in our life. Do not walk alone or work alone. Always do something with him. Say something with him. Ultimately, purity of heart leads to intimacy with God, enabling us to experience his presence in profound ways. Psalm 24, verse 3 and 4 poses rhetorical question this is a rhetorical question all right it says who may ascend the mountain of the lord who may stand in, in his holy place the one who has a clean hand and pure heart when we prioritize a purity of heart we position ourselves to encounter god's glory and dwell in his presence this is what it means to see God with pure purity of heart. As we reflect in Matthew 5, 8 and its implications for our lives, so let us heed the call to pursue purity of heart with unwavering devotion. May we continue to draw inspiration from the examples of purity found in the scriptures and commit ourselves to living lives marked by sincerity, integrity, and plus holiness. In a world of hunger for authenticity and truth, may our lives radiate the purity of heart that leads others to encounter the same living God. Let me just finish my sermon by reading Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25 and 26. And, and all the people of God say, because I'm almost done. <laughs> and then it says, I will sprinkle clean water on you. I will sprinkle clean water on you. And you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. And I will remove from you your heart of stone and give your heart a flesh. And God is ready to rewrite down his new words on that heart of flesh. And that the word of God, the word of Christ are ready to purify your souls. That's the power of the gospel. Amen. Let us pray. 
Father in heaven, as we conclude this time of flashing on the purity of our heart in Matthew 5, 8, we humbly come before you, seeking your cleansing and renewal, Lord. May your spirit continue working on us and purifying our hearts and minds and souls. Everything we do, everything we have, everything we pursue in our hearts and minds. So that we may walk in righteousness and be a shining light in this world. Light and salt. Lord, grant us the strength and grace to live out the beatitude of Matthew 5, 8. Pursuing holiness. A life of integrity. Being a good example to the world. The people who do not believe. And let us continue to experience the blessedness of seeing you, our God, everlasting Father, both now and forever.